Hello and welcome to today's tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Canary uh, directly from their GitHub page. Uh, and I will be using a hat today because I didn't want to shower, so uh, never mind that. Uh, you will need to have your own uh, system up and running for this to work. So for example, if you want to use a virtual box through your Windows machine, that will do just fine. You can tag along with this tutorial or you can go ahead and, ho and buy or rent a host machine from Hetzner. Using the link, uh, the link below, you'll get 20 euros off from, uh, well not off, you'll get 20 euros for free to uh, do your test project. So let's go ahead and sign into cloud. Once you sign into cloud, you can go ahead and press new project. You can name it whatever, whatever you want to name it. Uh, for me, I would just name it uh, host machine, for example. This is where my hosts uh, are located. For this, I will be creating a new one, which I will name tutorial. Let's add a project. You see we have added it. One member and I am the owner of it. Let's go ahead and press it and press add to server. Let's go ahead and choose Falkenstein for uh, Europe. Uh, it's my, one of my favorite locations and including it unlocks a, a ARM64 uh, for you, which is a cheap uh, VPS option. But while using this, you cannot go back to a, uh, 86 or uh, change it over to a dedicated server later so uh use x86 for this for me i will be using canary and for that we'll need to use at least eight gigabytes of ram because what's uh, inside of these machines uh, are not the best things if you're doing this on your own system you might be fine running six gigabytes of ram depending on what kind of hardware you have but for hetzner let's run eight gigabytes on 80 gigabyte ssd and if you want to do this for real you can go ahead and select the first machine, which uh, contains 2 GB of RAM and 20 GB of SSD. It's for 4 euros a month, including IPv4 address. Uh, so you'll come up to 4.59 a month. The reason you do this is so later you can go ahead and run it back. So you don't have to delete the whole machine in case you don't, like want to take a pause, for example. So let's go ahead and select this first one, the cheapest one on x86 Intel AMD. We'll select Intel. Let's go ahead and shoot, uh, just leave everything as default over here. You can rename your uh, yeah, your uh, server name uh, if you want to, to your name, to your server's name or whatever. I will just leave it as you put into two gigabytes. Let's go ahead and create and buy now. And this is how simple it is. Uh, you have a little thing here. Once that is done, you will have an email sent to you. And I will not be showing mine. I will only be showing how it can look like. So this is my machine right here. You can see your new server. Your server Ubuntu 2 gigabyte was created. You can access it with the uh, following credential. You have the IPv4, IPv6 user and password. Let's go ahead and take those. Let's go to our desktop. Let's create a new uh, text document and name it. The, uh, you can name it your server name. You can name it whatever. I'll just name it tutorial uh, info. Let's go ahead and and uh, like uh, enter it and let's go ahead and copy paste the information we got sent in our email address and if you don't get it sent to you uh make sure to check your young box and, or whatever reason it uh, lands in there do this then we can go ahead and write a new password then copy the old password if you want security you should use long and unrememberable unre uh, passwords for example like this one but you want it even more complex so you can go ahead and just spam your keyboard and add like a few hashtags uh, those kind of marks here maybe even this kind of mark you just add some big letters a few more words and viola you have a strong password now this will be our new password let's go ahead and add a new section over here call it super user let's go ahead and write user and pass and for my user, I will just name my user A. Uh, you can name it your name, you can name it your server's name, you can name it something a little bit out of the ordinary. It's a little bit uh, better to do because you will have bot scanning your, uh, your information and everything until they find a valid user that they can access. And for example, you need to lock root user because you will have brute force attacks while having a hosted machine anywhere in the world. You will have brute force attacks and root is the first user and any bot will go uh, go ahead and like try to brute force into it. let's give it a password we can for example copy our newly created uh root user na name we can remove one there we can add one there we can remove one here we can add uh, for example one at the end we can add a little small b over there and there we all we have a completely different on brute forcible password now for this you need to have pretty downloaded you need to have win scp so let's go ahead and download it i do have it downloaded myself so let's go in here and write win scp download uh make sure you don't click on sponsored uh, any sponsored tab at all go to the official websites where it's not an ad because ads can be phishing links and you don't really want to 
get yourself into those. Don't give consents for this. Uh, if, if you know, you know. Uh, this is something that you usually want to avoid doing on any website because you're basically giving your information away for free for uh, free money for the whoever owns the website. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and go to a new tab and write Pretty download. Let's go ahead and download it here as well. Make sure to enter the actual link, put it org. Let's go ahead and press this little tab over there, download party. And here you want to do x64 bit. Uh, so the first one, because you, who the hell uses a 32 bit system for whatever reason nowadays, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Now we can close down these two tabs. We can leave this one up or we can actually enter this one now. As you can see, we have two gigabytes of RAM, 20 gigabytes SSD drive. Uh, this is completely fine, except for the RAM and VCP uh, vCPUs are not fine. Let's go ahead and shut it off by pressing the power on option up here. Let's go ahead and go into rescale. You have it right there. You can see here, uh, rescaling, uh, do you need more performance and more powerful plan? Uh, well, you can do so without upgrading your SSD drive which is the exact thing that we chose this machine for. So let's let, let's leave this enabled CPU and RAM only. This means that you will not get any more extra storage, which is exactly what you want. So let's go ahead and select the cheapest 8 one for 11.13 a month uh, on 8 gigabyte to VCP cores. If you want a more powerful one, obviously you can select it down here. For a work project, I would select the cheapest VPS if you have a live server project i would select either the cheapest dedicated one which they came out with another one which is only 15 a month uh, this one has gotten a little bit more expensive but it's uh, pretty obvious why uh, I, I would go i would personally go for something like this if minimum giga, like ram that you need is eight gigabytes go for 16 or a little bit something something like that it, it will make sure that whatever you plan on getting that you have more RAM and v, v cores more power in the system that uh, can handle more players in case you get too many players so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and select the cheapest vps which is eight gigabytes on two v cores let's press on rescale as you can see the ssd size is only 20 gigabytes no matter what you choose but the price will be the same and for this reason is that you can downgrade later in case you want to completely pause your project without deleting the whole machine and every uh, all the work you have done on there without backing it up and stuff you can simply go down to paying for 59 a month by rescaling it downwards because you have the 20 gigabyte ssd storage if you want for example more storage you can un uh, untake this one and now you can see 40 40 80 80 60 out of 60 if you do that you can't downgrade to lower you can only take the current selected and above so if i do 40 now i can no longer go back to 20 i need to delete the machine in order to go back to there and this is why you do that and now you can go into the overview and you can see we have eight gigabyte ram and two vcpus the v cores and that is completely perfect and you also have 20 gigabyte ssd but you don't really need more anyway anyways let's go ahead and log into this and i suppose you know how to simply run a file like potty or win SCP and just go through with the default installation just press spam press it that's all you need to do and then once you have it downloaded let's go ahead and take the ipv4 write it in there this is the public this is the ipv4 but it's also our public ip address let's go ahead and press open let's go ahead and press accept let's take the password the old one first let's go ahead and select root and let's copy paste it so with this you will have to do right click on your mouse and that is your basically uh paste method you have and i think i did it wrong uh whoops now i just paste it in there we go and in here uh luckily i don't really have to care about my ip address because i'm using vpn now so <laughs> good luck with ddosing me motherfuckers uh let's go ahead and write in the current password so you just have to simply right click once more there we go let's select a new password this is what the password will be updated to and you need to go through with this and paste it in two times there we go a root has been unlocked and your new password is this so you can remove this if you want to i always leave it in as default uh, uh, so you can just delete it and rename this one to password simply. Now let's go ahead and create a super user. And for this, I always use this tutorial. By going into utland.net, you can go into tutorials. You can go into basic. You can go into the third page and you can go ahead and select the tutorial how to set up the forgotten server TFS 1.2.10.98, which is by yours truly uh, a few years ago. Uh, I posted this one up here, which I got my hands on by, I think it was, uh, I think it was Cnote that was kind enough to send me this. And for some reason, their web service, uh, server has been down for the longest time ever. 
Uh, so we can simply go into archive, go into the Internet Archive uh, Wayback Machine, which is a super awesome tool. You can go in and paste that in. Let's hit enter on it. This is usually pretty slow. You can also do it here and search archived websites. Okay, let's press go. And if you use a virtual box, you will need to download an ISO image in order to set up everything. And I have done a tutorial like that before, so you can just go ahead and tag along with that one. It's also posted up on Utaland if you if you want to follow that. Let's go into one of the 2022 backed up versions of it. Here you can see you've been to 18 to 19.10 tutorial. We can simply go in here and change 18 to 20. Zero four. Let it load in. It's really slow. Uh, here we go. Create a, a, a create the user with super privileges. And this is the first step we want to do. So go ahead and write to do add user John. Well, you don't really have to name it John. Let's I will I will name my mine A. And that would be my super user. Go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and take the password that we created which for me is this and my keyboard is a little bit messed up so i'll have to do it again and then simply do that and you can simply skip through all of these steps and write yes at the end there we go now i have created a user a and for you it will be something different now i can go ahead and do super uh, sudo user mod ag sudo and our username this will give us super privileges like a root user so, so access to sudo which is super user uh so you get super user commands and now we can simply go ahead and uh move over to our user like that and now we have a at ubuntu which is our username of the server you can go ahead and set up a ssh key based uh, authentication if you want to you can go ahead and set up the firewall already let's go ahead and do open ssh that is really important and then you need to write in your password for your super user of course now you can also go ahead and do sudo ufw enable because you need to enable the firewall for this to work you can also can go ahead and do sudo ufw allow 7171 slash tc CP. You can press the arrow up on your keyboard and then you can go ahead and do 72, uh, 7172 TCP. Don't do only 7171. That will allow UDP as well. Uh, you don't really want that. So for now, you can skip the rest. And now you can go ahead and check your date if you want to do that. I will not do that. Uh, you can go ahead and do this uh, apt update, upgrade, and dist upgrade. Simply copy paste that command in, let it work, and then reboot the system. Whenever this comes up, just press yes on your keyboard and hit enter. Uh, whenever it's uh, booted up, let's reboot. And it may take some time depending on how fast of a, of, of a thing you have and there we go let's just press uh, let's just press uh, okay with uh, either space or uh, enter uh, press tab and go down to okay and press enter or space and let's go ahead and reboot the system by writing sudo reboot press okay and close on putty let's open reopen up putty and wait a few seconds I paste in the IPv4 address, of course. And wait a few seconds. One, two, and three, and four, and press open. Might have been a little bit too fast. It was. Connection refused. Go ahead and open up Putty again. And uh, just write in the IPv4 address uh, again. There we go. Let's boot it up. Now, just go ahead and use your password and your super user. There we go. If you want to do this uh, for serious projects, you can create a swap space, which is basically that you allow one or two gigabytes of RAM to always be available in case of a like over overload. Uh, so your database for example doesn't crash uh, crash and stuff i will not go through this now you do not want to install a remote desktop with your server project that is completely stupid uh you're opening yourself up for uh, uh, all kind of uh, attacks while doing that kind of stuff here you can go ahead and select apache or niggings i will go ahead and do niggings because i, I just love niggings and then once you're in here let's go ahead and copy this one which is to do apt update and to do apt install niggings this will install the whole niggings on your system go ahead and paste in the password yes and enter you don't really have to do service niggings status and see that it's running actively you can do that if you if you're really unsure if it does for me i will just skip it we have already allowed open ssh so let's go ahead and allow niggings full there we go uh, we allowed niggings full in the database let's go ahead and test it by entering the ipv4 address and by entering the, our uh, our, uh, uh, by entering our IP ad uh, address, you can see that we have welcome to Nigings, which means that it's up and running. You can see it was also not secure, but you have you need a domain name to do this, or you can go ahead and see how you can create a self certificate for your IPv4 if you don't really want a domain name, but you should get a domain name. Let's go ahead and install MySQL. Let's copy paste this in there as well. Really simple. So do apt update and so do apt install MySQL dash server let's go ahead and press yes and enter you can also do the sudo service mysql status and see if it's actually running or not but we will skip that i can go ahead and configure mysql security by simply writing this in sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation or just simply going to this page i'll have the link to the link below obviously uh, you can go ahead and 
just simply copy paste everything as well. Go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and press no for this. We do not want the validate password component for this. Okay, go ahead and do yes. We want to remove any anonymous users. We want to do disable root login remotely. And we want to delete the test database. And we want to reload all the privileges right now. There we go. Very simple. You don't really have to test anything here. If you uh, if you really want to, you can go ahead and do that. I, I will not do that. Okay, go ahead and install PHP and just hit enter. We can go ahead and actually install uh, the PHP version right now by pasting that in. And here you can also check the PHP version but it's not really needed you can go ahead and skip this here too uh checking the location of where everything is you can see here that they it will be 7.4 for example by default installation you will have to change that we'll go through that right now and let's go ahead and do the sim the configuration for the default server block over on the Ginx by entering the size available default go down here you have a few things you have to listen to the default server on port 80 let's keep all of this kind of stuff here you can see here we have the root here's the path so if you want to change the html folder you can for example do my server slash html if you want that or you just leave it as slash my server that will be your new html page but i'll leave it as a default here you need to add in index.php you can add in your domain name here if you want to for example but if you do have a domain name you probably won't even use a default server while running the game so you can just leave that blank uh so default here you have the php you need to undo the location you need to do uh, undo the include you need to undo the fast and here you can see you have 7.4 go ahead and put in your information in there so mine for example is 8.1 that is the latest version you will have now you can also do go ahead and undo that one remove the hashtag of the closing bracket because we have undone, uh, undone the uh, opening bracket up here we need a closing bracket down there and that is pretty much all you need to do in there now we can go ahead and do sudo diggings dash t see if it is you see that test is successful now you can scroll down here you can do uh you can reload diggings and there we go and now we have index.php so we have php enabled and working and you can also go ahead and test it here if you want to by shaking all the uh, this information page i won't have to do that right now you can go ahead and do it and see if it doesn't load up you have done the wrong php version so 7.4 minus 8.1 you can simply go ahead and look that up up here see which version you have for me i will have 8.1 and if it doesn't work you most likely have done the wrong php version so what is next let's go ahead and install php my admin Let's go ahead and install PHP my admin. Let's go ahead and enter our page here and write MySQL and just make up a password for it. You can do this by just simply removing, for example, two things from there. It will be impossible to guess by anyone. Let's go ahead and copy the password. Here we just press tab. We will not select a patch 2 because we don't use a patch 2. We don't use light a PD. So go ahead and press enter space. And in here you'll have to press yes. As you can see down here, press yes whenever this pops up. You will, you will enter this MySQL security password. This will be your password for MySQL. Go ahead and paste yours in. There we go. Now it's at MySQL password. So if you need to go into MySQL, you will need to use a MySQL password. Let's go ahead and go down and create a symbolic link. If you don't do this, your PHP Madme will not work. So if you, for example, go in now and go to your domain name and write slash PHP my admin, you can see that it works. Perfect. But we do not want it to work by entering PHP my admin. Let's go ahead and go down and here you can see that we are going to create a uh, super user for PHP my admin since we disable root root logins. Here it will prompt you to use your password and that is the create the password for my SQL that you created. Now we're in. Let's go ahead and create our user and before you just go ahead and enter all your details and stuff like that. Let's take a step back and watch whatever I'm telling you. Uh, my enter key is not working. Really really bad keyboard I have. Let's go ahead and do PHP my admin. Go ahead and write user. Let's go ahead and write for example I would just use a myself you can use something else. Don't use the same as your uh, super user. Let's use a pass and let's just use a random password like MySQL password. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of uh, things into it. There we go. Very simple. Let's go ahead and take the password of this paste it into the password bar. Let's go ahead and write identified with MySQL native password by the password let's also go ahead and change the pma user into a simple a that will be my user that will be different for you you will not use a you should never use a uh, you can leave at localhost if you want to do that or you can use for example percent for everywhere but i don't see why you should do that 
Let's go ahead and press uh, press enter. You can see that uh, query is okay. Now you can go ahead and grant all privileges on every table uh, for your user. And this will be really simple. You just change the user to A and hit enter. And now you don't have to do anything else. And the reason you do my MySQL native password is because of uh, you will have database issues connected to your database while running the server if you don't add that in. Because uh, I think Canary and P TFS uses uh, MySQL native password. And here we go. Uh, you can obscure PHP my admin by simply running this so you move the php my admin inside the html folders if you change your path you need to change it here too let's go ahead and paste that in and do pma hidden i usually do php underscore admin myself let's go ahead and do that and now if you go ahead and enter slash php my admin you can see that it's not existent or for not found now if you go in and do php underscore admin you can see that viola will come to php my admin simple you can do secure php my admin if you want to i i never do this unless it's on a real project that i do really care about uh, it will require another user and password before you enter PHP my admin window, uh, making it a step harder to brute force into your PHP my admin. Uh, let's go ahead and leave everything else here. We don't want to configure less encrypt and you cannot do it by the wrong version and you will most likely use the latest version which is 2204 by which installed on this here so we just have to leave that out and you have to figure out how to do that yourself or you can ask me in the comments uh, how you set up a domain name and i'll walk you through it it's really simple now let's log in with our user and password to the database viola let's press on the php Miami up here databases and let's go ahead and create one called canary let's create it let's go ahead and import uh or we can simply go to sql we can go into cnote ac github we can also go into canary GitHub. Here you scroll down and you will have Shema SQL. Go ahead and press it. Go ahead and take from top to bottom. Take all of it. Let's go ahead and go into the database and simply copy paste in there. Let's go ahead and press Canary, SQL, and go into CNOTAC. Go into Engine, Database, CNOTAC, Shema, SQL. Top to bottom, copy and paste and press go you can do this another way the usual way is by downloading the file itself and importing it by pressing canary import choose a file and go to the file where the shema sql is you always need to do the tfs or canary shema for first before you input any database for the website because else it won't it will you will get error saying that you can't find different tables and that is because you haven't imported the server uh the default servers the things that is needed for the website too in order to work so now we have done the data, data database setup very simple now you can go ahead and enter win scp now you log in with the ip before address or a public ip use your super user or for us we can for example use root user for now which will make things a little bit more simple but let's do it let's do it the hard way for beginners and use our super user press yes and we are in here is our super user home a if you go out you can go down to bar www.html you can remove this file and you can see that we have a message coming up here error deleting the file index negates the bn html uh and if you can't read it says permission denied what does it mean you don't have permission to delete it. Uh, by reading error messages, you will avoid a lot of stupid questions over Nutiland, which uh, seem to be quite annoying because there's already 10,000 salvations for simple things like this. So make sure you read what the hell it says. And in our case, it says permission is denied. But what do I do, you might say? Well, you can go ahead and do Utiland uh, win SCP permission denied. For example, permission denied, error code 3, support forum, uh, access denied, you have Utiland here, you first open your Ubuntu server, might go through that a little bit, see what, what they say there. Uh, stuff like this, it's uh, it's very simple. Or you can go ahead and simply do permission denied. That will take you to direct Utiland posts instead of anything different. And this is how you Google keywords by finding things here. For example, you see here, this guy has permission denied. Uh, go ahead and go to this one. See, it's by me I'm back in 2017. Okay, I had the same issues where you had, okay, I didn't know how to set up a custom server. Pretty simple. I was setting up Gizirak over here. You can see this guy has shown and she mod. Now we'll be using shown for giving um, folder permission. You can see the owner here is a root. This is why we as a user can't access it. It's gonna write sudo shown dash 
R, which means all repeatedly in all the folders in the current location selected. For us, it will be var www.html. And if we do this, it will do every single file that is inside HTML uh, of whoopsie. We do it before we do the path, we do a dollar sign, big letters, user. This will specify that the user is A, which is us, the current sign in user. Uh, we'll do changing the permission. So the owner uh, will change the owner of the current location var www www.html you can also do just www if you want to do that i'll do that there we go and now you can simply press retry and you can see that the owner is changed to a and the file is now deleted and if you go back and refresh you see you owner root refresh owner a if you go back owner root you can't do anything with roots you have to be the owner of the folder by a sub user in order to uh, change anything like that so let's go ahead and leave this for now let's go ahead and go into canary github you can go ahead and press the wiki page here you can go ahead and select um, on the left side here compiling on ubuntu 2204 which is our current version you don't really have to go through with these but just for the safety sake just copy paste it in so do apt update see if see here all packages are up to date because we did this before so you don't really have to go through this again but if you didn't you can go ahead and do that now you need to install all the packages and uh, needed in order to run the server and stuff like that and see make needs those files and stuff like that go ahead and simply copy paste it and press it in and do yes and enter now we'll do an update cmake and we will purge we will start by purging all CMA, current cmake and cmake, cmake files existing and we'll make sure to do this in order to have a clean install that will guaranteedly work after so avoiding most problems by purging the current existing thing press yes and hit hit enter let's do it and go ahead and do hash r i have no idea what that really does I haven't kind of had a read about it. You can go ahead and install snapd, which is needed. Press yes. We can go ahead and install the actual CMake classic version now. And I think the classic stands for the, the re most recent uh, stable build and nothing else attached to it. We just want the classic uh, CMake installation. Let's go ahead and do that. Let it run its magic. You don't really have to do the CMake version. You don't really have to know that. Because let's be honest, if you follow this, uh, if you follow this tutorial, you won't really need those kind of those kind of information. So let's go ahead and wait for it to to be done. There we go. It's done and installed. And let's go ahead and do. Let's go ahead and install it. Uh, the reason you do this is in order to get to the default uh, in, uh, default spa. We are currently in it. Uh, you can simply just write CD to get to the home page. Uh, the home. The default selection, which is home. Uh, which is home there. A, which is also super user and then here is going to be where we install vcpkg so let's go ahead and do cd which automatically takes us to home a which is our home location let's go ahead and install vcpkg and by doing this you need to use sudo in order to download it because you don't have the permission of the folder in order to install so let's go ahead and uh, clone that in there let's go ahead and copy this command here let's go ahead and let it install vcpkg folder and if you go into vcp you can see that it's currently uh, installing it in here you can see the user's root let's go ahead and do cd vcpkg let's go ahead and do sudo and copy in the command that we copy here like that so now we run the installation of uh, bootstrap and it's done and now you can cd out again you don't really have to do cd dot dot it takes you back one folder and for us we already need the home folder let's just do cd does really matter now we can go ahead and download the source code but what i usually do myself is i go into the github page and i clone the latest unstable build uh by downloading it zip downloading it to the download canary main simple as that then we can go in here and skip that part we don't really have to do this don't have to do this we don't have to check the folder structure uh this is needed and not needed you can use whatever you want to to be honest you can even have it in the server like a var location if you want to do that but you shouldn't do it let's go ahead and drag this in the canary main uh dot zip that we downloaded let's go ahead and do sudo apt get install zip and then sudo apt get install unzip you don't really have to do apt get install but you can also do like sudo apt install zip and then unzip that should also work and now when we have it inside we can go ahead and do sudo unzip canary main dot zip and then we'll go ahead and unzip all the files inside and put it in canary main you can simply rename it to canary which will be a little bit simpler now i can go ahead and do cd v uh canary my bad cd canary and now we are inside the location over here now what you want to do is you want to do sudo shimon shown uh dash r user dollar user home a 
canary and this will update the use the owner to us and yeah, simple as that we have all the files inside we can go ahead and do make dear build and see the build it will create a folder a directory uh, called build and it will also enter it by cd uh, so we can go ahead and do sudo make dear build and and cd build now we can go ahead and do sudo and uh, you can do the copy paste of the c make here i will never memorize this uh this thing and uh, you shouldn't either really focus on memorizing this kind of stuff it's got and press enter you'll get a, uh, most likely get an error message coming up here and uh, this is basically telling you that it can't find the current path of the vcpkg so vcpkg.c make it can't find it we can simply go back into here and you see the file and you have this little wiggly uh, thing which is almost equal to you can go ahead and delete it and do a slash home slash your user which in my case is an a slash vcpkg blah 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 and hit enter and now you manually told it where the file is located and for us is located right here vcpkg home a vcpkg and the file is in here and you can see we bypassed error by completely telling it like hey the file is right there use it to install all the rest required packages yada 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 so now you can see it's uh, currently doing this and this is going to take a hell of a long time to do so meanwhile you can see simply go ahead and minimize everything and leave this window open you do not want to uh, close it down you're going to get some error messages if you do th if, if you if, if, if you if you don't let it install you're going to have to purge it completely and uh, go through a, a very nasty uh, kind of uh, purge method in order to get rid of everything in order to be able to reinstall it or usually just work by running the command again it will retake where it was and go ahead and check everything so you can go ahead and leave this window open and you can go to cmake uh, cnote again and the reason we use cnote is because it's the easiest language like a uh, web engine out there for beginners uh, to use with the latest versions and everything so let's go ahead and just simply clone the latest build is also one of the most uh, recent stable builds because uh, obviously you see here last year three years ago last year uh yeah it's sort of the latest uh, kind of kind of build that you have there just go ahead and save it in here now you can go ahead and go down to var www.html which is your uh server locations for the it's a path for your website and you see this as a you see this file explorer in the on windows it's simple here's your actual file locations like file explorer and here is where you simply go in and go back by doing this that simple you see that's when uh, when it, it's a win p as your file explorer let's go ahead and drag in cnote act master let's go ahead and rename it to something very simple a.zip let's go ahead and let this run let's go ahead and open up another one let's go ahead and log in with the super user now we can go cd var www at html sudo unzip a.zip and type in your password there we go now we have unzipped uh, our web uh, our website which is cnote we can go ahead and delete the zipped one and now we can go ahead and do sudo shown dash r dollar user var www and now update and we are the uh, owner of it we can go ahead and do press on one simple five control a which controls uh, selects everything push it backwards one step it will move every single file outside of uh, cnote uh, into our html folder as you can see it's a little bit slower than it that is because we're compiling it in the background and this is going to take well we're not compiling we're using the cmake uh, blah 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 it's gonna take some time and now we can simply hit the delete on cnote act master we would no longer need a folder uh the file and there we go now you need to specify some permissions which you can see here we have 755 you do not want to use 7, uh, 777 uh sudo uh this one will be shown no this one will be shemod dash r 755 var www and now we gave it write and read permissions as you see here is updated and the php admin is still inside this folder if you delete it you can no longer access php my admin you then you have to do a relink of php my admin and now you can go ahead and enter the config.php drag that over to the main screen now you can see here we have all the config file uh, configuration already set up by cnote you can go ahead and write in your ipv4 address into this little little thing there the server path for me is var uh, home a canary go ahead and update your sql user minus a yours will be different whatever you put in the password for your your uh, php my admin user if, uh, still if you do a uh, live project you will want to have separate users for the database and for your server so you have to set that that uh, independently and the database is canary that we created and leave the sql host as that now you can go to login by using Control f you can search for login here you can see the ip address we will have to put in the public ip viola we will rename 
rename our server to Canary. Uh, this is needed for uh, in order to log into the game. Now we can go ahead and go out of this. We can go into home again, our server directory, which is Canary. We can go into the config.lua, which is non-existent. We can take config.lua.dist, copy, paste, remove .dist, and simply cre create a copy of this and call it config.lua. And here we go. Now we can go down to the IP address. We need to change it and have it matching with this right here. A simple copy, paste. The server name is Utisuru Beer Global. We need to change that to Canary. We don't need to have to change anything else uh, at the moment. We can skip everything over here. We can go down to the database section. You see SQL user root. For me, it's A. Then you go ahead and type in the password of your SQL user that has control over the database. If you create a separate one, go ahead and do that. Now you can go ahead and rename the database from Utisuru Beer Global to Canary. I leave everything as default to SHA1. It's a very weak method, but you got to go ahead and leave it as SHA1. And that is it that you have to do right now. Now you need to go into the GitHub page of Canary again. Then we go into the getting started page of a git book up here you search search for content login.php cnote so you see cnote act login.php to client 13. go ahead and click download on this right there save it out of the browser go to your web page again var www.html in here you have a file called login.php you don't really have to delete it you can just overwrite it so here you can see we have cnote act client 13 login.zip simply push this one out on your desktop go ahead and push that one in there and press yes we want to overwrite the current existing file and now we have updated that and now we are able to log into our client 13 and meanwhile this is getting ready which is going to take a long time we can go ahead and go back to the github page and you can see that we have to connect to the server to uh to take a stable experience you can either use the Uti client by meha or use the original tibet client if you want to uh do something else you can use the customized tools let's go ahead and download the tibia original client let's go ahead and do the source code dot zip that is the client 13 gonna save it and that one is outdated to be a client version if you want to use a reverse map editor for example let's go ahead and open up the downloads in the download section wait for the tibia client to download there we have it tibia, uh, tibia client 13.21 go ahead and drag it out to desktop close it down close this down now you have the client uh, client 13 laying on your desktop now you can go into the bin folder you see that you have a client 127.0.0.1.exe go ahead and edit it with notepad plus plus go ahead and press ctrl and f and search for 127.0.0.1 here you can see login web service and the client web service that is all you have to care about and you can see http which is the current protocol that we are using which is completely unsecure going to press i and s on your key Keyboard, which is usually located above your uh, key points on your keyboard insert mode it will look like this after you're done with that let's go ahead and open this one up and put it like this let's go ahead and do http dot uh, cool on mark slash slash let's do our ipv4 which is 91.107.211.38 slash login dot php you cannot do a backslash you can't edit the, the anything in it. You can only overwrite the current uh, things inside it because uh, Zipsoft clients is obviously a closed source. Let's do, go ahead and do it on the client web service as well. 91.107.211.38 slash login.php. So what this does is it will allow us to access our web server with the, the login.php page hosted in our uh, web server which is right there and that will tell the client to be like hey we are pointed to this server address at the login page here in order to access all the information the client needs in order to log in they can delete the original client and you can rename this one to uh, your server name so for me I would just like name it client because I don't have a server name go ahead and boot it up and you can see that I have it up and running it's cool I've never seen this before uh, I just press escape on it you don't really need to create a new account because we're creating a Sipsoft account most likely because we have not edited anything of that that was updated in a 13.21 one version pretty awesome pretty awesome I haven't seen that yet so now you have your client ready so now you are able to log into your server but we still need to compile it and that is going to take a damn while for it to happen and I can't think about anything right now that is needed for us in order to log into the server itself so whenever it's done I will just come back uh, right before before it's done it's 20 out of 23 let's go and enter the web page uh, by 
the IP address. You can see that we have a configuration error. Most people uh, seem to tend to not really understand what the hell this means. Uh, it says you, that it can't save the cache to memory uh, because you need an extension called APCU enabled in order to use it. And it's, uh, you can either install it or set it to false. Just read what the hell it says. It literally says here Ubuntu install, sudo so apt install php apcu. That is very simple go ahead and just paste that into in, in like this and install it and press yes and enter and i'll simply just refresh the web page and it's done you can now go ahead and create account do whatever you want to with the, the current web design now uh, you can also go ahead and work on the server meanwhile and the web page if you want to if you want to change out the layout you can go ahead and enter Utiland. for example they have a lot of different uh layouts and stuff here you want to go into the download section go to website applications and here you can look for anything related to cnote uh if you want to change uh, for example you log into email instead of user because uh latest cl later client uses email instead of a username that's very handy uh it was a back pain to uh, get this to to work i'm currently working on a uh, lost account and password system using only email address i uh, might post it up on utiland as well because i love open source and i am all for uh, uh, helping the community to get, get their own problems in uh, even if it's the slightest like easy issue for someone that has the knowledge in it to, to fix it to just be able to uh, look at it and be like okay this is how I do it. So you can go ahead and uh, use this if you want to by CNote. It's uh, very simple to follow. And here we have, for example, CNote old school layout by uh, by this guy Hemerus. Hem uh, I can't even pronounce his name. You can simply just download it and uh, exchange the layout. It's it's a fairly simple simple process. But now until this is done, I will, I will be back. And here we go. It's uh, it's done. Now we can go ahead and enter the GitHub page again by the compiling version. And now you can see that we are going to compile it the last one. We're going to build a Linux link re release version. Go into your uh, window here and go ahead and write sudo. Go ahead and paste that in and write in your password because it's going to take you far too long. And go ahead and do your super user password. Paste that in and hit enter. And now we are compiling to out of 33. And this is also going to take a little bit of a while, but it's going to be faster than doing the CMIC, uh, CMIC thing. So I will be back once this is done. Uh, once this is done. Now the now that the compiler is done, we can go ahead and enter WinSCP again. We can go ahead and go out of the web, the, uh, web directory. We go into the canary. You can see that it is owned by root again. So let's go ahead and do sudo shown r user boom a canary. And now we updated it to be uh, owned by us. We go into the build folder, Linux release, and we go into the bin folder. We copy this one. We go back back to the original folder. We paste it in here. Now you can see that we have the launch or the executable this is basically your uh, exe file let's go ahead and go down to cd dot dot and in here you can go ahead and do screen dot slash canary and it will boot up the server and it's running in debug mode uh, you can change that in the config uh, config Lua. you can go ahead and go all the way up and you see here log level debug debug we are currently in debug mode as you can see now once that, that is done the server is up and running and we have connected the database and set up everything now you can go ahead and log in with the default user is god uh at god and password is god i can see god we can log into it and we are now signed into the server as you can see and uh, you might notice that it's looking looking a little bit pixel that is because it's using the wrong graphics mode you can go ahead and enter the graphics section and enable uh, instead of smooth retro we can do anti-aliasing and hit apply and uh, it looks a little bit better and now you can uh, basically walk around and do whatever you want whoops so now we have a working uh, a server that you can work on from from scratch uh running connect and this is how you do it. You have a setup web server and everything is connected as it should be and you are now able to log in using the client that's created on the desktop. If you guys have any, uh, have any questions or anything or if you guys enjoyed the video please leave a like and a comment down below saying thank you. If you have any problems go ahead and comment, comment it down below and I will see uh, I, will try, I will try my best to um, explain the situation uh, or help you out like that if uh, if you have any, any issues. Uh, if you want to add me on discord it's uh, Jorka or Jorku hashtag 2078 and if you guys have any other tutorial you want to see for example tfs version or uh, anything like that how to use how to set up reverse map editor how to do this and this and that go ahead and leave a comment down below saying hey i want a tutorial in this please and uh, i'll make sure to smash with the hamburger like and uh, uh, probably go ahead and do it so this is uh, anyways this is how we have done it now we have a live server that is up and running with latest canary build uh, also compile and stuff like that uh, if you want to see it, how you do it with a virtual box uh, running on linux for example so you don't have to pay for it uh, you can go ahead and comment that down below as well and i will 
go ahead and uh, do that so this is how you do it and you are very welcome and thank you for watching uh, this all the way through and if you clicked out before this outro i i really do hate you uh give, buy my burger no i'm thinking i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm just kidding uh, anyways go, go ahead and use the referral co code down below if you want to uh get, get some free credits uh it gives me uh, 10 euros as well you know for free after your first uh, purchase of a machine so that's very cool uh until then um uh i don't know what else to say but uh, good, good, you know what just goodbye goodbye this is it goodbye